Well, now the news now. And the meeting between Pakistan and the Financial Action Task Force, or the FATF, has begun in Beijing. Things might not be looking good for Pakistan as it is, uh, well, heading to the meeting with a 400% surge in cases against eight globally banned organizations. However, Pakistan's Minister of State for Economic Affairs and his team will defend the country's performance on 22 points given by the global watchdog at the joint group meeting starting today with a focus on buying more time. Pakistan, which is already on the FATF's grey list for failing to combat terror financing and money laundering, is hoping to convince the body that the country has taken measures to counter these crimes in the country. In its compliance report submitted first in December 2019 and then again on 8th of January 2020, which answered the 150 questions posed by the FATF regarding new Pakistani policies on money laundering. Pakistan has apprised the joint group of FATF that it has as many as 500 terror financing related cases that it has registered in Pakistan, out of which 55 ended up in conviction in the courts. Moreover, the FATF has also informed the State Bank of Pakistan that it has imposed penalties on defaulting banks and statutory sanctions regime was also implemented. The mandatory currency declaration scheme has also been implemented at all airports in the country. However, these might be inflated numbers. For instance, one of the world's most dreaded terrorists, Hafiz Saeed, has 11 cases registered against him directly, but Pakistan has only been able to indict him in about two cases. The 650-page report outlined the steps taken by Pakistan between October last year and January this year to implement the group's recommendations. In the last plenary meeting in October, the FATF had shown satisfaction over only five points of the action plan out of a total of 27. Expecting that the FATF may grant another relaxation to the country probably up to June or September this year. In its upcoming plenary review meeting in February, Pakistan is expected to argue that four months is too short a period for Pakistan to comply with all the remaining points. The FATF have kept the country on the grey list up to February. Pakistan is trying to avoid being blacklisted. The face-to-face -face meeting in Beijing will continue for three days till January 23rd before the FATF's upcoming plenary meeting, which will be held in Paris. Pakistan faces three possibilities, either exclusion from the grey list and placement on the white list, the grey list status quo for up to June or September, or blacklisting is the worst-case scenario. Pakistan has so far successfully managed to avoid the blacklist due to diplomatic support from China, Turkey, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia and Middle East countries. Not surprisingly, Pakistan's biggest bet is the United States. Pakistan has reached out to the United States as well for some support as well. And Anas Malik is now joining us live for the latest on this. And Anas, well, as the, that FATF meeting uh, well goes under, is underway, uh, we also believe that ahead of that meeting, Pakistan is actually urging the U.S. to get it out of the FATF grey list. What more do we know about the diplomatic parlays of Pakistan? Well, absolutely, Bhairavi. The FATF's joint working group is currently meeting in Beijing. Now, this is that critical uh, meeting between Pakistan and the FATF joint working group because, remember, this group has been tasked to look over Pakistan's progress on the 27 points that it had negotiated in uh, the June of 2018. It said that uh, Pakistan had negotiated back then that it would be implementing the uh, 18 points, uh, the 27 points in about 18 months. Those 18 months have ended, uh, will be ending on the 23rd of January and subsequently the FATF plenary would be meeting and deciding Pakistan's fate. Now Pakistan has only uh, shown progress on only five of the uh, agenda pointers that it had agreed upon and today uh, the FATF joint working group in a face-to-face -face meeting it has formally uh, commenced and the Pakistani uh, Minister for Economic Affairs is representing the Pakistani side. Now they are trying to, uh, trying to buy some more time uh, as what I've learned from sources in Islamabad that they say that uh, it wouldn't be possible 
possible for them to implement the rest 22 uh, uh, pointers, the remaining 22 pointers in uh, in a span of about four months. Though they say that, uh, and on the report as well, they're trying to show significant progress. Uh, now the report that is that is being presented, it says that Pakistan has a, a race, uh, Pakistan has had an increase of about 450, 51% uh, in cases of registration of terror financing. Similarly, 677% uh, percent increase in terror uh, uh, financing cases. Uh, uh, again, 403% increase in punishment in terror financing cases. About PKR, 31 crore rupees have been recovered uh, from terror financing cases. And, uh, and until December of 2019, about 827 uh, cases of terror financing were registered. 1,104 arrests were done, out of which 196 punishments were done. Now, remember, there are about 34 individuals that Pakistan needs to act, eight organizations, eight banned organizations, particularly that it has to act against those organizations that were named by the FATF. And as of now, uh, Pakistan, si Pakistani sides, uh, 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 Pakistani sides' preference would be that they would be able to uh, uh, garner some more time or lumen some more time. But for now, right. it remains that whether or not would they be able to convince uh, the FATF or not, that remains to be seen in the Beijing plen uh, Beijing's uh, 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 Joint Working Group meeting. Yes, uh, yes, Barry. All right, Anand. Thanks very much indeed for joining us with the latest and sharing what exactly is Pakistan's plan ahead of the next FATF and the current one that's underway.